Good evening, everyone. We're just going to let um, people join the webinar. So I'll give um, everyone just a couple more minutes and then we'll begin. I still see people joining, so we'll give it a few more seconds. All right. Okay, I think we'll start. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for honors programs at Stony Brook University. Um, it's great to have you all here. And, and I'm glad you could take some time out of your, uh, I'm sure very busy evening. Um, and um, it is Thursday night before a holiday. Um, well, here in New York, there's no school tomorrow, so we do appreciate you joining us. Um, so to, tonight we have um, some of our honors programs um, folks here joining us, and I will let them introduce themselves. Um, but we are going to talk to you a little bit about um, each of our honors programs, um, how they're unique, um, and then you can think, maybe think about what is, which one is a good fit for you. Um, if you're thinking of applying to any of them, um, they will have um, a Q&A. So feel free to put your questions um, in the Q&A um, and then we'll get to as many of them as we can. Um, so we'll, we'll jump right in. Um, so I'll ha uh, um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Tian August. Um, I work in the undergraduate admissions office, and I also um, am the admissions coordinator for Scholars for Medicine. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that program and Scholars for Dental Medicine a little bit later, um, and I will pass it on to Jess. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Clare. I am the director of the Honors College. She'll be talking a little bit about that and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have once we're done. Um, and then at the end, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about um, another honors program that we have university scholars. So we could um, both Doreen and myself can answer questions about that program as well, so. And hi everybody, my name is Doreen Aveni. I'm the administrator in the Women in Science and Engineering Honors Program. Glad to have so many folks on the call today. All right, thank you. So Jess, did you wanna start sure. and tell everyone about the Honors College? Sure, I'm just gonna um, share my screen here. Uh, get going, okay. Um, so hi everyone, um, the Honors College. Um, we are a small program here at the university. We are a small and highly selective uh, honors program that we have. Usually we're looking for an incoming class of around 100 students. And what makes us a little bit different than others at the university is that we have our own honors college curriculum that will supplement most of the Stony Brook curriculum requirements. So we will have seminar courses and mini courses that our students will take with other students in the honors college. And those courses will satisfy a lot of the gen ed requirements that you have. So that's uh, important to keep in mind that our curriculum is something that would supplement what other students already have to take. It's nothing that's in addition to, to courses that students have to take. Um, so in addition to the curriculum that I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, we also have co-curricular enrichment and support. Um, we'll put on a lot of programming, academic and social program for, programming for our students throughout the course of the year. 
And then we also have individualized planning and guidance. All of your um, advising is done through the Honors College, which is also a little bit different than others at the university. Um, and so we will advise our students throughout all four years, um, strictly through uh, the Honors College. And so just to give you a little bit of sense of applying to the program, this is um, these are some statistics that we have from this past cycle. Um, we receive a number of applications for the Honors College and um, our average SAT score and, you know, we're test optional. So that's for the students that have opted to submit their SAT score is around that of a 1500, the average ACT of a 33, and then the average GPA is around the 90, 97 or 98. Uh, I would say for those students that were admitted to the program, um, but just keep in mind that this is an average, so um, a lot of students will fall um, above that and a lot of students will fall below that, but this is kind of the average of our incoming class um, and what we're looking for. Um, just to talk a little bit more about the application process, our application deadline is January 15th. Um, and you know, I'm sure Doreen is going to talk more about that too. Um, so January 15th is our application deadline. We are not rolling admissions for the Honors College. So you have to be admitted to the university first. And then once you're admitted to the university, our decisions for the Honors College will come after that. Um, so around the beginning to middle of March, we'll send out our decisions uh, for the Honors College. Um, and then after that, um, Tian is going to talk a little bit more about um, the scholars from for medicine, but also the scholars for dental medicine program, um, where you'll get your decisions for those programs a little bit after that as well. So um, yeah, it's important to note that um, we are not uh, rolling admissions, um, but you will receive your decision from the university first and then from an honors program. Uh, just to talk a little bit about the curriculum, uh, these are our core seminar courses that we have. These are interdisciplinary courses. Honors 105 and 106 are taken during your first year. Honors 105 is during the fall semester. Honors 106 is during the spring semester. And then there's Honors 201 that can be taken either in the fall or spring semester of your second year, 301 your third year, and 401 your senior year. Um, these are courses that are only with other Honors College students, and they are taught by faculty members in a small classroom setting. So there's about 19 to 20 students per class for the seminars. In addition to these core seminar courses, our students will also take uh, mini courses. And so you'll take three mini courses uh, by the time you graduate. And the topics, their topics courses, they change every semester. Uh, these, this is just kind of a snapshot of what our courses are, um, but they change every semester. We'll have about eight to 10 of them for our students to choose from. And if you see something you like, you would take it. If you don't, you can always wait for another semester to take it. So our curriculum's a little bit flexible in terms of when students are taking the classes. All of the incoming first year students have to take a 101 class. We have our own individual sections of Honors 101, so we tailor our Introduction to Stony Brook course um, specifically to our Honors College students and population. So what we're doing is we have an incoming cohort of students that will take our seminar courses and we'll take our mini courses. All of our first year students, if you're living on campus, will also live together in um, Gang Hall. And so we're building a cohort in a community that way. And so a lot of our first year students will connect in their 101 course in Yang Hall. Um, they'll co connect in their seminar courses. Uh, they'll also connect through our events and things like that. So that's kind of how we start building our honors community through the Honors College. <laughs> um, just to let you know a little bit more about the curriculum, not all of our, our courses will supplement all of the study book curriculum requirements. There are some curricular requirements that are outside of it. Um, we talk much more specifically about this once students are admitted and they come to advising through the Honors College, but we like to tell students ahead of time that there are some categories that are not satisfied. A lot of these categories can be satisfied by AP credits or transfer credits or things like that but we'll do individual advising with a student starting at orientation. So as soon as um, a student is admitted and they'll uh, come to a workshop over the summer, 
will meet with the student individually to make sure that they're taking the correct courses and have everything that they need. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about another requirement that we have, which is our senior thesis requirement. That's honors 495 and 496. All of our students during their senior year, their last two semesters, will complete a thesis. Uh, they'll work with a faculty member on campus, um, and this is independent research. So this could be something that has to do with their major. This could be outside of their major. Um, it's completely independent, and they'll be working on a senior thesis project, which will culminate in a um, poster presentation at the end. And in a second, I'll show you kind of um, some pictures about that and what I'm talking about. But all of our students will complete the EXP Plus category, and you'll complete the um, complete a senior thesis through our program. We also have um, co-curricular enrichment and support. So aside from that, um, we have programs for our students that are um, academic. We'll have faculty roundtable series where we'll have a faculty member come and just talk about a specific subject. Um, and that's, that occurs during campus lifetime throughout three uh, or four times a semester. Uh, we partner with uh, our Eureka program, which is our undergraduate research and creative activities program. So we connect students to research on campus as early as their first year if they want to. Some of our students will wait to get involved in the research into their second or third or fourth year, and some want to start right away. And so we talk to them early on, even specifically in the 101 classes about how to get involved in research on campus and how to start doing that. Because a lot of students will come in and they'll say, I really want to get involved in research, but I'm not really sure how to do that or how to get started. And so we're here to help them. We're definitely a resource to connect them to those opportunities on campus. And so we'll do that through our program and through the Eureka program, as well as their, um, their major departments. Um, there's also grants and fellowships that we help our students apply for. Um, we'll run workshops for our students so that they know these opportunities that, they're, that are out there for our students. Um, so we'll run those as well throughout the course of the year. And then, of course, we have some fun social events for our students. Um, we will have a student advisory board that will run a lot of programs for our, for our honors college students, such as like homecoming barbecue or um, we have a charity ball every year. Um, Great Gatsby was the theme last year, but it continues to change uh, every year. And then we also have um, trips to the city. We will bring our students. We're actually going uh, on December 3rd to the Met. So we'll bring a group of students into the city and we'll go to the Met. And then in the spring semester, we'll take a group of students to uh, a Broadway show. So depending upon what show the students want to pick that that year, um, we'll bring them to that. So we have a lot of like fun social activities for them. These are just some pictures that I'd, I'd like to quickly show about our Honors College. Uh, this is our senior symposium. So this is what the thesis symposium will look like um, at the end of the senior year. So it's, it's just a poster uh, presentation of research that our students have been working on. Um, these are just some of our fun activities. Um, this is a homecoming barbecue that we have. Hopefully we have like a nice day out for it. And so um, we have a lot of uh, fun games and stuff for students uh, at that time. This is our charity ball. So we'll have, um, like I said, every year we'll change the theme and we'll just have a nice dinner and a fun kind of um, activity or ball or dance for them to like get dressed up in. Um, and then this is just a picture of our New York City trip. These are some of the museums that we've gone to um, in the in the recent few years and then uh, some Broadway shows that we've we've also gone to. <clears throat> we also have um, a study abroad program. The most recent programs that we have were in 2019, obviously because of COVID. Um, we're trying to get the uh, programs started back up again. Um, these are uh, programs that we run during the summer and winter session, just because that tends to be an easier time for our students to study abroad. That doesn't mean that our students cannot study abroad in the fall or the spring semester. We work with them and they're scheduled in order to do that. Um, but we have the opportunity to provide 
for the winter, for example, Honors 201 in a mini course uh, where students can go to Florence for three weeks and um, they'll complete those requirements during the winter session. So it gives them the opportunity to study abroad, but also to get the credits, the requirements that they need to, to kind of get that out of the way. Uh, we're starting, we're hoping to start that program next, uh, not this winter, but hopefully next winter. So um, we hope that some students will actually um, have some interest in those and we can get those running again. For summer, uh, we're looking to start our Ireland, Ireland and England program. Um, this is um, a program where you would take Honors 401 and then also the SUS course um, with a faculty member. Um, this is Northern Ireland and England that students will go to, and we're also hoping to start that up again. Um, but these are just some pictures of our students that have gone on those study abroad programs. Uh, I talked about advising. So individual planning and guidance, all of your advising is done through the Honors College. We start early on. So we start um, advising you pretty much the summer before you enter. We have one of the first um, workshop dates, and then we also will continue to register our students uh, very early on. You will get priority registration. Um, and so all of our students who um, are in the Honors College will get priority based upon their class year. So um, if they come, if you come in with a lot of credits and you have a, a UQ or sophomore standing, you'll get priority within that standing to register. This is something that we're currently doing with our students right now. We're in the thick of registering for the spring semester, um, which is kind of wrapping up for us. But all of our students got priority uh, for registration, which really helps them when it comes time, crunch time uh, to get those really high demand courses where where seats fill up pretty quickly. Um, so our curriculum is a little bit flexible in terms of when you take the um, when you take the courses. So uh, for students that want to take honors two one and three hundred one in the same year or something like that, we tailor our curriculum so that they can do that um, so that they can take other courses that they want to, uh, they could double major, they could have a major and a minor, they could be involved in other things on campus. So we try to um, try to be as flexible as we can uh, with our students and our curriculum and when they take those courses. Um, so like I said, priority registration for our students and then priority housing for our freshmen. All of our students, again, will live in Yang Hall um, together uh, during their first year. And then after that, they can choose to live wherever they wish to, um, whether they want to live, um, it, say in Yang Hall or some of our students will just move to West Apartments and some of them will want to apply to the RAs and things like that and take more of a leadership role on campus. And so that's pretty much um, the quick kind of benefits that we have to the Honors College. I know um, a lot of you have, um, have questions about the program. I I just wanted to give kind of a quick overview um, and uh, let Doreen talk more about our live program, our sister honors program, um, and then talk a little bit more about uh, the other honors programs that we have at the university. So I will turn it over to uh, Doreen. Um, and again, I'll be happy to take any questions. Sure. Okay. Um, so, are we doing questions like afterwards? Should I should I present mine, or do you want to have some questions now? Uh, either way, I could certainly take some questions now if, if students wanted to. Your your volume's a little low, Jess. Oh, somehow cut out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see if I can fix it a little bit. That's I think that's better. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Amanda. How are you? We do have some good questions that might be good just as a follow up now before um, Doreen gets started with WISE, um, sure. if you don't mind. Um, Tien um, tagged one, what is the required GPA to um, remain um, an active student in the Honors College, which I thought was great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so our GPA requirement is a 3.0 to stay with Standing Honors College. Okay, perfect. And um, 
another question was about transferring into the honors college, <laughs> which I think you mentioned, but maybe they <laughs> didn't understand exactly what you were saying. So, yeah, sure. So, um, if students um, if students are not admitted directly to the honors college, but they come to Stony Brook University, or if they attend another university and decide to transfer in, um, we do have a transfer process. You will apply. Um, to the program through our website, and that um, our deadline for that is May 1st. So we do take some transfers every year. There's a smaller population of those students, but um, we'll do take we do take students that transfer into uh, into the program. And then depending upon what year they are, um, we are able to kind of waive a couple of the requirements for them. Okay. And um, a question, a couple of questions came up about the supplemental essay and whether it has to be exactly 250 <laughs> words or if it can be less or more, and if that's kind of like a hard, fast rule. Uh, yeah, for us, it's that's not a hard, fast rule. It could definitely be more, it could definitely be less. Um, whatever you would like to take in order to answer the question, that's fine for us. So we're not, we're pretty flexible in terms of how long or short it is. Just as long as you answer the question, that's all we care about. <laughs> awesome. Um, and a student asks if um, you take both Stony Brook 101 and Honors 101, or just Honors 101 if admitted into the Honors Program, Honors College. Yeah, just Honors 101. So you don't have to take SBU 101. Um, a lot of students, uh, our first year students will take SBU 102 in their sophomore year. We don't require that. So we have our own requirements for our students, but you would just take uh, the Honors 101 section, not the other SBU section. That's awesome. And um, they can also view all of those details on the Honors College website, just a little plug for the website. Yes. <laughs> um, do you recommend that the two letters of recommendation be written by anyone specifically, any specific type yeah. of teacher, counselor? That's a good question because as you'll see, my answer is different than why. <laughs> For us, no, it doesn't matter who um, who writes the letters of recommendation. We prefer um, that they are our teachers, but it doesn't matter what subject. Okay. Yeah. And um, does the Honors College admit by major? As in, do different majors in the Honors Program have different acceptance rates? Very clever <laughs> question. <laughs> yes, that is a good question. Um, no, that's not how we review our applications. And so there's no, um, the criteria remains the same, uh, no matter what program that you're applying for. Okay, and I think we're, we have a couple more, but these are sh yeah. short, because I think you might have already mentioned, is the average GPA for the Honors College weighted? Uh, good question. Um, yeah, most of the time it is weighted. However, it comes in from the um, from the high school. That's the average that we typically take. We don't un we don't tend to unweight the averages if they come in weighted. Okay. And then we got two different two questions. Um, does do you get to select your own topic of research for the senior seminar or senior symposium? Yeah, absolutely. You can pick whatever topic you want to. So even if you are a STEM student and you attend intend to go to, you know, medical school or into nursing or something, you could certainly um, do your thesis on in music, or you could write a novel or something through creative writing or history. So it could be any topic you want. It doesn't have to be related to your major at all. And it doesn't have to be clinical research. If you decide that you wanna do something else or something different, um, you know, now's the time to do it in college. So we certainly would support that. Okay, and the last question, um, I mean, there are more questions, but I'll answer them. Sure. Um, does the Honors College curriculum conflict with prerequisites for other majors? No, our, um, our curriculum doesn't conflict at all. You will take your major courses first and you will we'll make sure that you satisfy any prerequisites that you need for your major or anything like that first. And then in addition to that, then you'll take the honors college courses. So um, if you are in a major, for example, um, a biomedical engineer, 
you'll take a lot of credit your first semester. And if you can't take honors 105, it doesn't fit into your schedule, there's too many credits, you'll wait to take honors 105. And a lot of students will end up doing that. So you'll take your major courses first. Okay, awesome. So now um, everyone, please welcome Doreen, who will um, give us the rundown on WISE. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen and I have a similar presentation to Jess. Can everybody see that? Okay, so welcome to students, welcome family members. Um, I'm happy to talk about the WISE program. Um, is the WISE program right for you? And that's a good question. And that's why we're attending tonight and presenting to you. I wanna tell you all about the aspects of the WISE program and you can make a decision if it's right for you. The WISE Honors Program is specifically designed to give you educational and professional STEM opportunities. Now, we are different from the Honors College in that our main focus is STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, and math. And those are the majors that we are looking for. And we really want to see women um, and folks like, that identify as women pursuing physics, pr pursuing mathematics, computer science, um, all the engineering disciplines. So we really wanna increase those numbers of women in, in those areas. Um, yes, we have students who take biology, who are majors in biochemistry and chemistry. So we span all the different colleges here at Stony Brook, marine sciences, arts and sciences, engineering. And we provide very similar to what the Honors College does. We provide academic support. You get close advising throughout your entire time here at Stony Brook. We give you professional development. We have special seminars. We have lots of opportunities um, and partnerships with the Career Center. We put you into those research labs. We are engaged in the community. We have a K-12 program here also that you can get involved with. Um, we also encourage our students to go study abroad if they can. And we really want to really open the door wide for, for folks to enter the STEM fields, especially those who are typically underrepresented women and other, and other folks. The curriculum, similar again to the Honors College, is we have a, a, a specific credit um, curriculum, 20 credit curriculum that you're gonna be taking over your four years. And you're also gonna take and satisfy Stony Brook's requirements and your major requirements. So whatever your major coming in with that you choose, you're gonna follow those requirements and you're also gonna satisfy the university's requirements. And the nice thing about both of our curriculum uh, is that it overlays with the university requirements in a, in a lot of nice ways. So you don't have to take anything extra. You're already getting the, the, uh, the credits you need by following the WISE curriculum. And another great feature is that if you get a scholarship that's tied to um, degree progress, like the SUNY STEM incentive or TAP or Excelsior, the, the program requirements for WISE actually count for those degree applicable credits. The WISE honors curriculum is the first of its kind specifically for WISE folks. So you may have heard of other WISE programs at other universities, uh, but our, our curriculum specifically for the WISE folks is it's an academic curriculum. So if you might be looking at other uh, WISE style programs at other places, but they might have like a club model or co-curricular model, but ours is the first of its kind specifically designed to give you the, the tools you need to launch yourselves as scientists, engineers, you know, thought leaders, policy makers, you know, pertaining to women in STEM. So these are the WISE courses that you'll be taking. You're going to take these courses throughout your, your time. The first, uh, first year you'll be taking um, similar to the Honors College. They have the Honors 101. Um, we have our WISE 105. Um, and then in your sophomore and junior years, you're going to be advancing on. You're going to be taking um, courses specifically shining a light that affect women in STEM, with society and gender in STEM. Again, uh, we give you some some great career centers, career planning tools um, woven in throughout our curriculum. In your in your sophomore year, you're taking career planning in STEM. You're taking research classes. You're in the laboratories. You're going to Brookhaven National Lab, which is a national lab located closely to Stony Brook, and we we are jointly affiliated with them. 
um, in your senior year, you're, you're going to be taking a leadership course, you're going to be taking life design in STEM, and you're also going to be choosing some really practical, practicum uh, courses. You can, you can earn credit to be a TA, you can earn credit and be a mentor, a student leader, you can earn credit for doing research in a lab or getting an internship somewhere, you'll earn those credits. Um, and then similar to the Honors College, all students are going to be doing a, a thesis or a senior project. Now, if your major, let's say it's mechanical engineering, or let's say it's electrical engineering, or you're pursuing an honors um, program in, let's say, biology, they will have their own thesis, and we and WISE will accept that. So you don't have to, if you're thinking, you, oh, I got to do a senior design project, and I have to do a WISE thesis. No, we accept your major's capstone senior requirements so you don't have to be overly burdened. For those who want to do a WISE thesis, again, you can choose any topic you want. I have computer science uh, students doing topics for, you know, how does a WISE style curriculum improve retention, things like that, an academic, you know, paper shining a light on what the WISE program is. So I have lots of WISE topics, which is great for our students. We do special advising sessions, similar to the Honors College, we have priority registration, so you're not getting closed out of the classes, you get to register ahead of other students in your year, which is a very nice perk. Um, we do one-on-one -on -one advising, so I'm always available, you can, you know, I have walk-in hours, I have appointments you can set up, and um, so we really want to give you that, you know, personalized service. And high achieving students such as yourselves, you have a lot of choices and we want you to choose what we offer. We purposely want to give you that special attention. We want to give you close contact with faculty because we know that's what you're craving. We know you are like the, you know, the best of the best that you, you're, you want that intellectual curiosity satisfied. And that's what we try to do in our programs. And we have a very nice feature in uh, the WISE program, which is mentoring. So students in your first year, you're, you're partnered with an older student. She's typically a junior or a senior. And we group students by major. So computer science first year students will be mentored by a computer science junior or senior. She can show you the ropes. She can give you the, the lowdown on the classes you should take and what it's like to you know take certain classes or what professors are like or how to be successful. So we you know really promote success strategies in those mentoring groups, but also some fun things. You get to go to dinner and celebrate birthdays and go to the movies. And your mentoring group is like the first you know close knit group that you'll have on campus. And um, students say they they become lifelong friends with their mentors. Uh, having been in the WISE program for as long as I have, you know, I hear from alumni who say they're still friends with the people they met on, in their mentoring groups. We also really promote hands-on research. So we actually have a course specifically to open your eyes about research and we bring you to Brookhaven National Lab and you're gonna be working with faculty, you know, at the lab and also mini projects in at Stony Brook, mentored by faculty, mentored by PhD students, and you're actually going to jump right into actual research projects in a variety of disciplines. You'll have marine sciences, you'll have computer science, you'll have computer modeling, There's so many different choices that you can do in this course. And this course is actually like a springboard. If you love the, some one of the projects you worked on, that's a good, that's going to open the door for you to either stay on in that lab or springboard you into another lab now that you have that valuable research experience under your belt. And similar to the Honors College, we have a research symposium that students are going to present their research. Um, that's the folks who do their senior theses as well as students who are in these in the in this particular class. And it's a great way to connect with faculty, to connect with industry partners that we invite. So it's it's really a very it's a great professional development event. So we 
you know, our wise community, we live uh, in close knit communities in the residence halls. And we, you know, it's a way to scale down the big university that Stony Brook is. You get to see the same students in your in your residence halls, in your in your some of your classes. And when you see a Y student in like a computer science class, or you see a Y student in an intro like chem course, it's great. You you have that bond, and it it scales down the the largeness of this university to a, like a really close knit, uh, you know, a community of like minded folks. So we also do some some fun activities, some you know events that we that we have special guest lecturers come in, faculty come in and talk about their research. They to give you ideas how to get involved in the lab. Um, peer panels like these this picture shows that all of these students gave a talk about how they got into their research labs and the opportunities that you can follow in their footsteps. Um, we do we we encourage all students to participate in Eureka. Uh, Jess mentioned that earlier for Honors College. We partner with Eureka as well to have our students present their work. Our students present at professional conferences, like biomedical and engineering students present their work. So we have, we really promote that among the wise students to go out and seek those extra opportunities because we know you want to do you want to you know the, you want to take the world by the horns so you really we give you those opportunities so all students uh, will receive a scholarship so most of our students are you know you're all high achieving students and you all really you know are going to earn that merit scholarship from stony brook any student will, who gets um, a merit scholarship um, who doesn't get a merit scholarship will always get a y scholarship so the minimum scholarship that we offer is two thousand for four years um, in addition to the, the scholarship you'll get as an incoming student, WISE also has special opportunities to apply for scholarships just for WISE students. And we have, you know, benefactors and donors that want to support our students through scholarships, and you have, you have that opportunity to apply for them. So I know a lot of people are looking at the chat. What is your G, what is your GPA requirement? What is your SAT requirement? Yes. So hopefully this will answer some of those questions for the Wise program. And again, this is for I'm I'm presenting the middle 50. So you know this is the mid range of the you know the from the between the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile of our incoming admitted students. So yes, some people are higher, and yes, some people are lower. But this gives you a picture. And the scores are for those who reported their scores. So we've been test optional for the past few years. So of the students who reported their scores, this is what the profile looks like. And again, you do not need to re report your scores, but if you want us to consider them, we will. Um, and then a, there's a little note there, remember to upload your essay into the admissions portal. So some folks were saying, how do I even put my essay? It's after you apply, most folks apply through the Common App um, by January 15th. And after you hit that submit button, within two weeks, hopefully sooner, you'll get an email from admissions saying what your criteria are to go ahead and log in now to the admissions portal. So you're not done when you hit click, when you hit submit, you got to do a little bit more. And remember to do that little bit more um, after you get that message. So go ahead and then that's where you're going to upload your essay why are you a great fit for your honor your preferred honors program and we want to see those and the reason we want to see those is because we want to show that you're eager you know about us and you have you know a passion either for research or a passion for you know whatever whatever it is we want to get that little you know peek into your mind and into your motivation um, and why you'd be a great fit for us so okay that's the end of my presentation so i'd be happy to take questions Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, so let me scroll back up. So we have some questions from the audience. Um, what are you looking for when you submit the written response as to why you'd like to be in the program uh, for WISE? Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised that some students just arbitrarily click on things. So we want to kind of weed out the students who accidentally clicked or arbitrarily clicked that they want to join WISE when they really don't even know what WISE is. So we want to know, we want to read what you're interested in. If you are interested in research, if you are interested in, you know, you, you want to 
you think that you'd be a great fit because you would add to our student body. Those are the kinds of you know things we want to see. We just want to kind of verify that you really are truly interested in the WISE program or in the Honors College, and you just didn't happen to click randomly. Fantastic. Um, someone just wanted clarification about the GPA requirement for WISE. Sure. So, I mean, we are similar to the Honors College. We have a very high achieving, you know, group of students. Um, 94 or better is typically a successful GPA for our students. We look at the, the whole file. So I don't want folks getting hung up on, oh, what my, my GPA isn't exactly there. Or, oh, my SAT scores are not exactly there. We're looking at your whole file. So we're going to look at your extracurricular activity. So take the time when you're doing the common application to list those activities. We want to see what you're doing. If you have a research experience, I want to know about it. So um, don't get caught up on the numbers because it's really not a numbers game. It's really we want to see who you are. What makes you tick? What are your passions? What are your interests? And that's what we go on. And that's what how we really shape our class. It's not a numbers game. If it were a numbers game, everyone would be the same. And we don't want the same. We want diversity. We want folks from, you know, different regions, different abilities, different aid, you know, just so much diversity. That's what we're looking for. And it's not a numbers game. So please put that out of your mind when you think of applying to the WISE program. Great. And um, I have a question. Can I get accepted if I'm undecided, if my major is undecided or undeclared? Yeah, we we do have a few students that for whatever reason want to be undeclared. And I don't know if it's because they can't make up their mind and they're so interested in so many different things. I'd rather see an interest in, in a STEM major. And maybe if, if a student is not going to commit to a major initially, she should she should at least talk about um, what she's leaning towards. So at least I know. Um, Appropriate majors are any STEM discipline, not so appropriate is let's say business, not so appropriate is let's say, I don't know, economics or theater. So those are not considered STEM. So if you're, if I can't tell you're interested in STEM, um, you know, I, I would lean towards, you know, not being able to make that offer. But if I know you're interested in STEM, but you just can't commit to one, let's say bio or biochem or maybe computer science, then yes, that's okay. This question is, can I be in both the Honors College and WISE? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no. I mean, we are closely related. We are all under an umbrella of honors programs, but you really should be choosing. Um, you can't participate in both curriculum you know, at the same time. It's really not feasible. So you really should pick which is, the, which is your preferred program. Awesome. And if your school only provides an unweighted average, will the difficulty of the courses be taken into consideration? Oh, for sure. I mean, okay. we look at if you have AP credits, you know, if you took AP classes versus, you know, not. I mean, having said that, though, a lot of schools don't have AP or a lot of schools don't have those, you know, college level courses. And we take that into account. But if your school does offer it, um, we'll see your transcript. I mean, Jess and I, we, we're, lo we're looking not just at the overall GPA, we're looking specifically at your transcript. You know, freshman year, which math you know you took. You know, sophomore year, which math you took. You know, that's how closely we look. And another question: Can or should we apply uh, to an honors college and wise? I mean, yeah. I mean, Jess, you can jump in too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can certainly apply to the programs. You just have to rank what your preference is. And so you could certainly apply. Um, you might be interested in getting into either one of the programs or all of the programs. Um, you just have to indicate what your preference is. And uh, I know that there's also um, some other kind of unique programs, like such as the Computer Science Honors Program. Um, that is a program you can be admitted to as well as be part of the Honors College. Um, and so that's kind of a unique program that you're admitted to um, through admissions. And then um, if you're admitted to that, you can still be part of the honors college. But in terms of the honors programs for WISE University Scholars and the honors college, you just have to indicate what your preference is. Great. Now, is, um, Tian, are you 
presenting. Maybe we'll have you present before we do the rest of the questions. Yeah, I think Jess was going to talk uh, about um, university scholars. Oh, sure, thank you. Yeah, I can speak quickly about um, university scholars. I just just like jiggle your microphone or something. It's, it cuts out a little bit, so I you okay. know. I, okay. Yes, that's good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have a few slides um, on university scholars that I can share. Um, the director of the program, Jeremy Marchese, um, wasn't able to join us tonight, but he did share a, a couple of slides and um, both myself and Doreen can answer any questions that you have about this program as well. This is another honors program um, that is uh, another kind of sister program under our umbrella. Uh, the University Scholars Program is a little bit larger than ours. Um, they're around 200 to 250 students. Um, and so they're a community of students dedicated to learning through giving back to the campus community. So they um, are very much focused on leadership and service uh, through that program. Jerry Marquesi is the director and then um, they have a lead advisor in that program, Stephanie Caban. Um, and then they also have a, um, a coordinator through that program Alex Renato, um, who just started recently. And so um, they're a small team, similar to both the Honors College and Y uh, programs. But um, what makes the University Scholars Program uh, a little bit different is, um, is their size and that they do not have a specific curriculum component. So they do have a specific course, courses that I will talk about in a second, sections of courses. Uh, but they don't have um, a curricular requirement to, to remain in the program. So these students are also high achieving students. Um, and they are uh, around the top 8% of the incoming freshman class for us, based upon uh, similar statistics through uh, the Honors College and the WISE program. Um, and they very much look for university scholars, very much looks at the co-curricular involvement that you have. And so, um, they take into account your GPA and your test scores uh, if you submit those to us, but they really very much look at um, what you're doing uh, in terms of your extracurriculars, your extracurricular involvement um, throughout high school. So uh, similar to, again, the Honors College and the WISE program, you would indicate on your application that you're interested in the University Scholars Program. Um, just make sure that you rank what your preference is. Um, and then um, average SAT score for um, for University College is around 1440, and their GPA is around 96. Again, almost identical to um, to the honor, Honors College and, and Wise program. Um, it's a University Scholars is also a four year program. Uh, they do have some requirements from freshman year through their senior year, um, but so that that program, the requirements are um, just a little bit different in terms of like what their curriculum is. So all scholars are members of undergraduate colleges throughout their, their first year. Um, and so that's a little bit different too. Our students are also part of the undergraduate colleges, but um, the involvement's just a little bit different. And Jeremy can talk more about that um, if you are admitted to the University Scholars Program. Um, so in addition to, um, Basically, their um, event requirements, they have certain sections of Scholars 101 and Scholars 102 that students will take. Um, very similar, again, to Honors College, where we have Honors 101, they have Scholars 101, uh, but they also have a Scholars 102 requirement for their students. Um, and if they also have a Scholars Fellows program, so this is kind of a mentoring program, for university scholars, uh, for students that want to um, be mentors, uh, peer mentors, they'll also be TAs for uh, Scholars 101 section. So there is a certain course that students will take through the University Scholars for that program. Their academic advising is also done through, uh, through University Scholars. And so throughout four years, their advising is the same. They'll also get priority registration within their class year. Um, and there's a university scholars notation on their transcript as well. So um, they have special events. They also have um, have the, the priority that the other honors programs get as well. 
So to remain in the program, um, you have to complete Scholars 101 um, uh, with a three or higher um, in Scholars 102. Same GPA requirement uh, is a 3.0 to remain in good standing, um, not responsible for academic dishonesty. One uh, requirement that Scholars has uh, that's at least a little bit different for us is that you have to attend a core credit event for Scholars. So again, they put a lot of emphasis on um, leadership and service and um, they require all of their students to attend um, at least one event, one of their scholars events per semester to remain in good standing there. Um, and then all of the university scholars have to complete the ESP plus category. They do not require a thesis for their students, um, So, but they can complete a thesis or they can get the ESP plus credit through other mechanisms such as TIAing or being involved in research um, or internships and things like that. Um, so that's pretty much the scholars, uh, just like a quick little overview of University Scholars Program, um, but they have a really good website uh, that if you have other questions about it that we can't answer, you certainly can go there um, or reach out to Jeremy for questions. Okay, thanks, Jess, for sharing that information about um, university scholars. I just have a few quick slides that I will share um, to go over really quickly, um, scholars for medicine and scholars for um, dental medicine. Uh, so scholars for medicine and scholars for dental medicine um, are not really honors programs. Um, they are scholars programs, um, and these programs um, guarantee admission into our dental school or, or our medical school um, upon completion of um, a bachelor's degree um, and the requirements for the, um, successful completion of the requirements for the scholars for um, medicine program. Um, so very quickly, just some application requirements. Um, so for scholars for medicine and scholars for dental, you do need to submit test scores. So official test scores, SAT or ACT, um, need to be submitted, a total of two teacher or counselor recommendations, um, and that's a total. So you can submit your recommendation for um, general admission in addition to one other one. Um, and then we are also looking for an essay. Um, I have the prompt here on the screen. A lot of you already know what it is. It's also on our website. Um, and then do documentation of US citizenship um, or permanent resident. Um, although scholars for dental will take international students. Um, okay, and like uh, Wise, like Doreen and Jess, shared um, student profile. Um, historically, this is what um, scholars for medicine and scholars for dental successful applicants have fallen within these ranges. Um, and it's not, there's, it's not a minimum. Um, like Doreen said, we are looking for um, the whole package, right? So we're looking at the GPA, of course, um, test scores, um, but also everything you submit. Um, so if you have um, additional letter, letters of recommendation, you are welcome to have your um, letter writers email us directly with any extra ones you have. Um, we read all of the essays. Um, so again, looking for that well-rounded student leadership skills, things like that. Um, and then I think someone wanted to know um, kind of the process of um, the application and um, review and interview um, process. So you would apply to Stony Brook and you would get reviewed for general admission. And then if you are admitted, you would go on to be reviewed for any honors program um, or scholars program that you're applying to. Um, so you can apply to Scholars for Medicine or Scholars for Dental Medicine. So one or the other, 
um, but you can also apply to any of our three honors programs as well. That's not required, but we do encourage um, you to also apply to the honors programs. Um, then um, the, the committee, there is a Scholars for Medicine Review Committee. Um, they will review the applications. We get over 5,000 um, applications per year. That's a lot. Um, to admit probably around 10 students each fall. So it is probably our most competitive undergraduate program. Um, so the it goes through a first initial committee review, and then the committee will recommend um, about 40 um, candidates to the School of Medicine. So when it gets to that point, um, these applicants really are um, reviewed as they would review a student applying to medical school. So again, extremely competitive. Um, and then from that pool of candidates, the School of Medicine will um, invite students from that pool for interviews. And they're usually um, the end of March. Um, so you'll you'll get your scholars for medicine decision um, around mid or early to mid March. So you'll hear from um, us by then, um, and then um, students selected for an interview will do the interview, um, and then from there the the um, school of medicine will um, you know make the decision about um, who will be admitted. Um, so that's kind of the process really quickly um, advantages to Stony Brook's Scholars for Medicine program because there are other bachelor um, to MD programs out there. Um, the major benefit being we do have a hospital right on campus. Um, so that's unique to um, just a handful really of universities that offer this program. Um, so that really gives undergraduate students um, the opportunity to um, be exposed to the medicine side really early on. Um, and then um, I, I think that's it. Um, I know we're running out of time. So um, Amanda, did you have any other questions we could go through in this last minute? Well, we have uh, we have 71 open questions. So many of them are duplicates, so I'm working feverishly. Um, yeah, we can probably answer one or two more, but just wanted to reiterate that the session is recorded. So um, you can rewatch it and you can always contact us um, with any follow-up questions. Um, we had a question, is it possible to transfer between programs that came up a lot? Um, like from at the at the moment, no. I mean, stay tuned, maybe. Um, but at the moment, no. We once you once you're in one of the um, honors programs, you you stay in that honors program. Right. Um, someone asked about the acceptance rate into Wise. So we last cycle we had about seven thousand five hundred applications. Um, we sent out about. Mm, 400 or between 400 and 500 uh, offer letters. So that sounds high, but that's because you guys have a lot of choices. So we know students have a lot of choices. So our yield tends to be about 100 to 130 students from those 500 offers. But still, out of 7,500 applicants, you know, we only offer about four to 500 offers to, to yield that class size. Okay, and another question is, would being involved in sports interfere with being in the any of the honors programs? We have um, we have a few athletes that are uh, that are in the honors college. Um, the only time it really interferes, it, it it honestly depends upon the sport, and then it depends upon um, your practice schedules and things like that because we don't have 
16, 20 sections of honors 201 that students have to take, right? So we only have like two sections, three sections each semester. And sometimes those sections might be later in the day and it's hard for students to take that because they have to practice and they can't take a certain class after 2 p.m. or something like that. And so that's when it gets a little bit tricky, but we do have, um, we do have a few athletes in the honors college. As, okay. as do as does the wise program so yeah we do make we try to make as many accommodations as we can yeah and i know university scholars um I'm, i know they've had athletes as well so that's yeah. great and one i know we're a little over time so thank everyone for bearing with us um we had a question here about demonstrated interest and whether that's a factor in admission to any of our honors programs for honors college and wise so for demonstrated interest, what that means to me is I'm hearing about it in your in your uh, essay, why you're a good fit. Also, if you've ever done a science fair or if you have any shadowing experience, you know, in a hospital or things like that. So demonstrated mm -hmm. interest is really a just kind of like a, a phrase that we use. How do we tease out your interest that you actually have an interest in STEM or you have an interest in the honors college or university scholars is that where do we find that we find that in your essay we find that in your extracurriculars we find that in you know the things you you make known to us we're you know you got to kind of tell us that <laughs> okay um i'm just going to post um one last link for everyone we have some upcoming special topics uh virtual events the end of the month um, into the beginning of December. So we welcome everyone to join us for those. Again, this recording will be available. So sorry we couldn't, I couldn't answer <laughs> all of the questions. I feel like I kept answering them and I'm like, I just answered this. I just answered this. So hopefully you asked more than once and I answered uh, more than once. <laughs> that must be what it was. Um, uh, but we're really happy that everyone joined us. Thank you so much to our speakers, to Doreen, Jessica, and TM. This was so informative. And I know that our guests agree uh, that this was really valuable information as they um, either go forward to applying for admission for fall of 2023 or beyond. Um, and we hope to do this again. <laughs> uh, and we also hope that we see all of the students who were admitted and then are in our programs on campus in the future. So good luck to everybody with your college application process and honors applications. We, we really hope that this is the least stressful <laughs> um, and that we've done what we can to alleviate some of your stress and concerns and fears and have a wonderful rest of your evening. If you have a long holiday weekend, enjoy it. <laughs> if you're visiting colleges, college campuses, that's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody.